Welcome to a look at Salesforce Diagrams in Action. We're excited to see all of you. Now, by show of hands, how many of you have used Salesforce Diagrams? Okay, I love it. It sounds like there are plenty of you who are in the right place to learn more about what Salesforce Diagrams can do for you. Now, of those that have used it before, have you used it within the last 30 days by show of hands? Okay, I love it. Even more opportunity for us to talk about uh, Salesforce diagrams. So this session is all about a look at Salesforce diagrams in action. And first, we'd have to do just a wee bit of housekeeping. I imagine you've never seen this slide before since you've been here for three days. But essentially, it says Salesforce is a publicly traded company. We might be making some forward-looking statements. We're asking you and your organization to make your purchasing decisions based on features and functionality that's available to you in market today. Now, I recognize that there are plenty of, of other places you can be across the campus right now, so we want to thank you for being here with us today. We have a lot to share with you. I am Nevia Van Wright, Principal Evangelist of Salesforce Architects, and I'd love to introduce you to my colleague, I'd probably stand for this. Uh, hello, Salesforce Plus. Hello, everyone. My name is Shobi Abdi, Principal Evangelist, also of Salesforce Architects. Thanks, Shobi. So there's a few things we want to make sure that you leave with today. We want you to know what resources are available for you with Salesforce Diagrams, and we've been doing some uh, cleaning and changing here. So we want you to be able to identify the various diagram types and classifications and also understand the use cases for the diagrams that you see, and we want you to know about all the tools and templates that are available for you and where you can find them. So Salesforce Diagrams gives you an opportunity to be what I like to call a visual storyteller. You can use your diagrams to align your stakeholders and teams. So think about your business and the decisions that they need to make. Think about your technical teams and what they need to build. And think about people who are onboarding to the team and maybe people who are offboarding, the opportunity to share the recent information or collect the recent information and have that in your diagram. Now, when we talk about diagrams, we're talking about a few things. There's standard diagramming components so that you can build out diagrams in a way that works for everybody, and I'll cover that in a moment. We also provide you with reference architectures, which include the data model and also reference architectures and the tools and templates. So we're going to cover all of these today so you can have a look at what they look like. Now, with the standard component, you can see here there are a variety of things. There's a header where you can actually tell the, or should include the title, but in addition, you can share the scope of the diagram. So I'm sure there's been many times that you've picked up a diagram, looked at it, and said, okay, what is this diagram supposed to be telling me? Here, as a creator of a diagram, you get to put that directly in your header. Now, we also give you icons to work with. So as you're using or building out your Salesforce solution, you can provide clarity around which icons you're using. And one of the most challenging things that I find when building diagrams, or I should say used to, is making sure those little arrows are right and making sure that I'm forming the right relationships, the one-to-many. We've done that for you here with our connectors. And in addition, we also built cards. So the other thing is building the box to show what properties will be included. You have all of these cards available to you as well. And what's nice about the diagrams is that you can use them in Lucidchart, you can use them in Google Slides, or the variety of tools that are here for you. Now, when I said we were doing some housekeeping, we, did, we went back and named the diagrams what they are. So you'll find capability maps within the framework. You'll find system landscapes there. You'll find solution architectures as well as interaction process flows. So think about your process flows with, of those sequence steps with numbers included. So I've talked about it, but I'd love for you to be able to see it. Up front. So I'm going to ask Shobi to go ahead and give us a guided tour of Salesforce diagrams. Okay. So who is ready to see diagrams in action? 
Come on, who was ready to see diagrams in action? I know it's the end of the day, come on. All right, so here's, the, here's 50 more slides. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, that would be fun. That would be fun and cruel, right? So who here has been to the Architect website, architect.salesforce.com? All right, now by the end of the day, all those demands should be raised, right? Because you're here right now. So to find diagrams, pretty straightforward, right? It's just, you can pretty much find diagrams, click on diagrams, and here we are, right? So what I'm going to do is exactly the previous point, right? We did a little bit of uh, a reshift, right? So raise your hands again. Who actually created a diagram using the Salesforce diagram template in the past? Right, now, exactly Nevi's point, if you haven't done it recently, we've made a, quite a few updates, right? And shout out to our uh, Diagrams product manager, Kelly Zur, who's been working very diligently on this. But one of the things I wanted to do, actually one of the first questions I wanted to ask is, who was at the Architect keynote last night? Right, so one of the things that we actually called out in the Architect keynote is that everyone has the ability to actually download those diagrams. And just so you know that we were actually telling the truth, here are those diagrams. Right, the ones that were actually created. Right, so the idea is that you can take any kind of exactly as any of you mentioned around visual storytelling, anything you create in a whiteboard or any kind of physical asset, you can then convert that over to a diagram. But I'm going to go over a couple right now. So one of the first ones that I'm actually going to show is a system landscape. Now, as we know with Salesforce, it could be a little bit fun to navigate how it actually works, mostly because we keep renaming everything all the time. Right, so what you get a chance though with the system landscape is to broadly and in a very concise and clear way understand what it is that's available, right? It's a mix of not just the products, but also the integrations and how they work amongst one another. But what's great about it is that you can see, but can you actually manipulate it? The answer is yes. So who here has used Lucidchart in the past as a primary product? That is a lot of hands. All right, awesome. Right, so Lucidchart is a great partner of ours along with all the others that uh, Nivea showed on the last slide. And what you can do is you can not just see it, but you can actually manipulate it. Because you may be wondering, okay, yeah, that's great. But I don't use Snowflake. We use Google BigQuery. Great. So I'm just going to type in Google and done. How amazing is that? All right? There we go. Thank you. I got some applause in the back. <laughs> right? You know, that's what I was shilling for, just shilling for applause. Right? But in the end, the goal with this and with all the diagramming assets that you see is that it's not simply a, a version of it where it's not malleable. It's supposed to be malleable. Right? It's supposed to be updatable. And we'll also cover some of the guidance because what Kelly's done, which is amazing, is that she's actually produced net new guidance on like kind of how and why and what those diagrams should be doing, right? But not everybody's in Lucid. Who works out of Google Slides often, right? It's got a couple of folks in Google Slides, guessing maybe salespeople. I'm just kidding. But, um, but you can also create in Google Slides as well. And we get this request often where it's like, hey, these are all great diagrams, but like I, I live out of slides, whether they be PowerPoint, Google Slides. You could also manipulate that as well. And everybody remember the last name of the company that was in? It was Google. Can I do it here as well? I did it, right? In the end, regardless of where you're, what medium you use, the principles of the diagramming framework is that it's a structure. The goal is to work anywhere and everywhere based on, that language, based on that visual language. So that's system landscape, but system landscape may not be for everybody. So what we're going to do is go back to the reference architecture, and I'm actually going to show you another one, right? The one I'm going to show you is some capability maps. Now, what's great about a capability map, who's, I know like, not everybody's technical, but who's more on the businessy side? Sales side, I want to convey idea. All right, cool, so the business capability map is for you. And I'm just kind of pointing not at one person, but just in general. All right, so what the capability map does is it allows you to take all the, the drivers and the capabilities that exist within whatever kind of solution or implementation that you're gonna do, and allows you to like, really demonstrate it along with specific Salesforce products. So often what happens is that like, oh, I'm gonna give you this amazing like 1500 page PowerPoint deck that's gonna have all your functional requirements and this, and then you may deal with like, a, a higher level stakeholder, like a CIO or someone who's like, yeah, that's great, but how do I see a quick articulation of why I bought this and which parts of what I bought will actually work with this. So being able to use this capability map allows for that, right? Because then it's higher, higher levels, more transformational visions, different kind of positioning. So the goal with these kinds of maps is that they allow you to kind of take this vision and then make it reality, right? So how do you make it reality, right? Now in reality, it's going to sometimes be different kinds of diagrams, right? It could be interaction process flows, uh, who here has ever used one of the decision guides within Salesforce, like in architect.salesforce.com? Who's heard of decision guides? All right, there's a handful, a couple, but no one uses it. But like essentially the decision guides, we look at them now, or in the wall architect framework, 
a lot of them have these diagrams, so you have the ability to interact with them and not just see them, but you actually have the ability to use them within your context. But one of, some of the really cool things that um, like, uh, Kelly's done with the updates and a lot of our teams is we've actually updated quite a few of the data models that are here. So who's actually looked at some of the data models that exist on the Diagrams website, right? Now, what's great is that like, people really love the data models, right? right? And more often than not, because when you look at help text, right, how do you look at the, the diagram? How do you look at the data model? It's usually like one object and then field, 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 field. And you kind of have to reference, like, look up parentheses this, and that's how you can tell what relationships there are, right? Whereas the data models here really allow you to see that in a more visual manner, right? And instinctively, as human beings, we're all pretty visual. So one of the ones that I want to show you is probably one of the funnest data models, the data cloud. Who's ever really looked at the data cloud data model at all? Oh, God, need more hands up for that one, right? But what's great about this is that now you can actually look at what it is that data cloud does. Now, one of the great features and elements and power of data cloud, like especially if you saw the architect keynote, is that one element of it within one of the, the demos is that we show that when you're actually working in Einstein, all that feedback that's coming in from agent force and all that is coming right back into data cloud. It's like, okay, that's great, but how's he actually going to look in it? You can look at data models like this. And what's even more better is that a lot of these data models that have been updated, so actually I'll go to the data cloud overview, it's probably the biggest, right, is that you can actually, we've actually also added what the scope is specifically of this, what entities are included, right? So what, this is fantastic because often people ask, well, if I'm searching for it, how do I know that I'm going to get the right diagram based on what I'm searching for? So we list all those objects, all those data. In the case of data cloud, the reason I'm showing data cloud is because often it's the most complex one, right? Which is with you know, sales cloud or service cloud, it's pretty straightforward. And what's even cooler, I'm gonna keep down the cool route, right, is that we also show what data models you know, coincide with it. You know? So that's really what a lot of these updates have been done, right? Because no data model lives on its own. You know, I'll just show another example of another data model, right? Is uh, if I go to everybody's favorite sales cloud. Who here loves sales cloud? Woo! <laughs> All right, that was me only, right? If you've implemented Sales Cloud, you know that you're probably doing something with forecasting, product and price books, territory management, right? It has a clear, direct association with Sales Cloud. Now, what uh, Nivea showed earlier, right, was a lot of, like, our different partners when it comes to um, diagrams, right? Like Elements, Miro, uh, Lucid, uh, Google, PowerPoint. But who here uses a different kind of product for their diagramming? You know, like maybe some people use Physio, God forbid, right? Or some people use like um, Draw.io and other different tools. Now, what's great about what we've done is, in the context of that, we can actually create similar diagrams and how to build diagrams. And what we've done is given specific best practices on what those diagrams should be able to do, right? And one of my favorite parts on steps to creating a diagram is this is one of the key things that like. Uh, like Kelly loves to convey, and it's absolutely apt. Define the scope of the message you need to convey. Absolutely. Right? That's, yeah, that's what we forget about diagrams. Often what we do is when, we, when people create diagrams, who do they typically create a diagram for? Themselves. themselves. Yeah, they create it for themselves so that they can bask in the glory of their implementation and technology skills. Right? You need to, con you need to create it for your audience. Right? So your audience, like your audience could be a lawyer. Your audience could be an eight-year-old who wants to understand how Lego Mindstorms work for the first time. Could be anything. So you have to create it for your audience. And then the key elements around the, the headers and the titling and the footers really give you a great brief around what it should be. And that's one of the things that we say is that we should get away from the thinking of the, the BHAT, right? The big, hairy, audacious diagram, right? And go into more ele discrete elements. And specifically within data model uh, notation, often what people ask is like, okay, I see your data models are great but I don't exactly understand what they're trying to convey. Now, every data model, here's the legend, right? Here's exactly how we convey it. Here's how we convey the, the specific entities within it. Here's how we convey it from like a visual level. And what's great about this is that by using these different kinds of visual entities, like even myself as an evangelist, I create diagrams all the time. Who here did a well-architected workshop at all in the last week? Yeah, so you guys see diagrams in those? It was created using the diagram framework. Like, and so, what it is is that it allows you to create and emphasize and convey thoughts and message, like thoughts and information in different ways, right? It's a full suite. And this is a little bit more advanced, obviously, but 
in the end, it's all about understanding. You need to understand what the diagramming framework can convey so that you can correctly convey that message. So that if they're looking at it, they're like, this is a great diagram, but I really don't understand what elements of it mean. That is where architect.salesforce.com slash diagrams live, right? Because when you can convey that, it doesn't have to be you saying, well, this is what I meant. It's, hey, this is actually backed by a Salesforce property, right? A Salesforce tool that is providing this. And then one of the great parts of uh, so like is, um, I'm going to overview, is exactly as uh, uh, Nivea showed, right? We have kit of parts, right? We had it in the slide. People are wondering, okay, that was great in the slide, but how do I actually utilize it in the, in the context of an actual, you know, like that tool itself? That's where these are all up. And the best practices, how, how to use the cards, how to use the variations. What it happens, right, is that by utilizing all these best practices and these guidance is that you get a very, you get a single language, a single visual language. And often, like who here is an implementer of Salesforce, right? Who here often hears like, well, what are Salesforce thoughts on it? What does Salesforce have to say about that, right? Because, you know, with, with the product company, right? So they want to make sure that you as the implementer are kind of speaking the same language as the product company. So now all of a sudden, if the product company is giving you a tool that tells you, hey, this is the language you speak, use this language. I'm gonna have a pretty firm suggestion, you should use it. And here's another thing I'll ask. Have you ever inherited an org or gone to an organization and there is no artifact for how that system is supposed to work? Have you had that experience? I not think everybody fun, else is just right? lying, honestly. I mean, like, they're not raising their hands, but 100% they have, yeah. Right. And so being able to document well via a diagram helps keep everybody aligned, one. Two, it's something that you can continue to update as your business evolves. And the well-architected framework talks about making sure that you can uh, take care of your users as your business evolves. Diagrams help you do that as well. So I don't want you to miss that uh, that clear oh, point. No, absolutely. And, and like I said, to get to here is pretty straightforward, right? So one of the things that we asked, uh, you know, our friend Kelly, it's like, you know, like what is it that we really want people to do? What's the key call to action, right? And the key call to action is go use Salesforce diagrams, right? So it's architect.salesforce.com slash diagrams. That QR code will literally take you to that URL. Uh, Kelly is the dedicated product manager for that tool, meaning that she lives, breathes, and like does everything that related to diagrams itself. So what she really wants to hear, like who she really wants to hear from is you. The people in the room, the people on the broadcast, as you utilize diagrams, as you start to see where particular maybe opportunities live around what information that could be conveyed, how you applied those best practices, how you utilize some of those templates, or you're like, hey, how come this data model's not there? Or this kind of diagram's not there? You know, or, you know, I'm, I'm from a language that's more right to left, not left to right. Who here is right to left in their native language? Well, you know, in, in, a, in a different country, it would be different. Hey, there you go. There you go. I got one. Right? So it's different, right? It's a different method of visual conveyance, and there are different regions. So that's why that feedback is critical for us, because we'd love to see how you took your method of language how you speak visually to utilize those components, those kit of parts and those components to make it real. Because that's what we want, right? We want to make this like, you know, relatable and a language that's universal. That's the key. So we wanted to thank everybody for joining us. And yeah, like please write us a survey, like tell us how we did. And then there should be a nine cent summary for this available right after this. Thank you very much everyone. Thank you.